Welcome to our tutorial on prosody, a three-hour series of about two dozen videos. Our aim is to overview everything about prosody, how it's produced, what meanings it has, how to analyze it, how to teach it, and how to use it in computational applications. In fact, this tutorial was originally presented last year at the Association for Computational Linguistics Conference. This version has better explanations to be clearer for non-technical viewers. We've also updated the content and split it into smaller videos so you can watch just what you're, interest, what, just what you're interested in. All right, so language has two streams of information, the lexical and the prosodic. The lexical is well studied. You see these two words, you know what they mean. You spent many years in grade school learning about words and letters and meanings. Beyond that, there's the prosody. Here's a visual representation. You can see the waveform in gray and the black brush strokes show some of the prosody. Here are just the pitch and the periodicity. But you can already see that there's a lot of extra information here. If I say the words, speech prosody, like that, you can hear my feeling about this topic. I'm kind of positive, I'm kind of impressed by it. You can hear something about my stance, right? Speech prosody, I'm intending to be serious and teach you something. And you can also detect from my prosody other things I may not have intended to convey, like my approximate age, and my level of alertness this morning. Well, that's a lot of information. How is it all packed in? How do people use prosody to do all of these things and communicate successfully? Well, we'll cover all that. So, what is prosody? We won't give a hard definition. We're taking a very inclusive view. Uh, but we can start by talking about the musical aspects of speech. A little more specifically, aspects like pitch, loudness, duration, and timing. There's also important things that pattern with them. Right? Creakiness and breathiness. These are not particularly musical, but in, in spoken dialogue, they pattern together with the other prosodic features. Now, in terms of production, all of these things involve stuff below the familiar phon phonetic generators of the tongue and the lips. So we could loosely refer to these as the throat-generated aspects of speech. If we think in terms of functions, um, we're interested in the things that make speech more than just text. The extra information that be c can be conveyed includes things like prominence, phrasing, pragmatics, tones, stress locations. And we'll also be mentioning articulatory reduction, which patterns a little bit with the other things. So there's a lot to cover. It's all related, all studied under the, under the umbrella of speech prosody. I'll just say we will not be talking about poetry Prosody is sometimes also used to refer to aspects of poetry, but that's outside of the scope here. All right, here are the topics we'll be covering. So one theme of the course is the functions of prosody. We'll start with a relatively familiar stress, prominence, tone, contours, and melodies. And we'll also cover some less understood phenomena, how prosody conveys uh, visceral emotions, and how it also conveys deliberately controlled small nuances. We'll talk, for example, about the prosody of sincere praise. We'll talk about how a half-syllable shift in the location of a pitch peak can make the difference between politeness and coldness. And we'll also see how prosody can be misunderstood with some real-life examples across cultures. Another major topic is technology and applications. We'll provide a high-level overview We'll never have any algorithms or download instructions, but we will explain how the technology works and lay out some choices for developers, especially regarding feature computations and machine learning. And we'll review the state of the art. There's some things that computers can do better than people today, like produce a clear, natural, pleasant rendition of any text, say, from a Wikipedia article. But there's also things that any three-year-old can do like be charming or persuasive, uh, that no program yet can. Before we get into any of that, we'll cover some fundamentals. Uh, what is prosody? How is it produced? Um, you know, there is special hardware in the throat for this. How is it perceived? What's going on in the ear, in the brain? How can we measure and visualize prosody? And we won't just give the facts. We'll sort of help you build skills that will enable you to hear these things a little more sensitively discuss them, describe them, produce them. For all these topics, we'll be fairly comprehensive, but it will be an entry-level uh, guided tour. 
for those wanting more detail, in the final lecture we'll give pointers to some other resources. All that content will be sandwiched between the intro and the outro. The outro will give some historical perspectives. We'll talk about teaching, why prosody is important to teach, why it's hard to teach, some ideas for techniques that can help. And the intro, uh, well, right after this lecture, we'll talk about why prosody matters. OK, so we're trying to make this tutorial accessible to, to many groups of people. For students, you know, since prosody never is really covered well in any class, in our experience, it tends to fall between the cracks. Here we're trying to give three hours of information that we wish we had learned, wish we had been taught when we were students. We designed this tutorial to help engineers, but again, we won't be presenting any specific algorithms. We'll mention transformers, end-to-end -end models, deep learning, but only to explain why aspects of those models are, are relevant for prosody modeling. With increased interest in language in real life, beyond made-up sentences and laboratory controlled experiments, uh, prosody is becoming more relevant across linguistics. We're also interested in helping those who are interested in helping others. Not everybody is a great communicator. Prosody is sometimes the differentiating factor. Um, existing resources, textbooks, other things on YouTube are not always as helpful as they might be. They're often very dated, so we, we aim to help here. And to be honest, we're also reaching out to anybody, you know, because prosody is really just fascinating. And we have some exciting new findings to share. Those new findings are the reason we're teaching this course. The field really has changed over the past five years. We won't be presenting anybody's specific latest research results, but our aim is to share the new emerging perspective with a wide audience. Gina and I each have about 30 years of experience with prosody but please don't call us old timers. We're both research active. Gina teaches in linguistics at the University of Washington. Uh, she teaches the computational linguistics program. The students she trains go on to work for Amazon Alexa, Microsoft, startups. I teach at the University of Texas at El Paso. My students go on to work for various companies, including Google, also the US government. Our aim here is to give you the knowledge for free. And we'd also like to acknowledge a lot of help on these lectures and the, talking about these topics and on these slides. All right, that was the introduction to the introduction. The next two lectures are Why Prosody Matters and the Applications Overview, or you can skip ahead to lecture four where we'll start talking about pitch production. <laughs>